Until now, SpaceX Starship prototypes are not really spacecraft yet, since none have yet left the atmosphere. But they're getting close, though. Elon Musk plans to have the first Starship orbital flight in the next few weeks. This initial Starship may explode on the launch pad. The first stage is powered by an unprecedented 33 rocket engines, after all, and clustering them so close together means that if one engine fails, it may be difficult to contain the failure. All this would be okay if SpaceX has the capacity to build many more vehicles as Starship iterates closer to a final product. And definitely, Starship will be the best spacecraft ever made soon. Why? Let's dive right into three aces up the sleeve that Starship will make everything else totally redundant. Firstly, Starship, as it's known, will be a fully and rapidly reusable transport system. Fully reusable means nothing's thrown away and the components can be used hundreds, if not thousands of times, over and over again. The hugely expensive booster with its banks of state-of-the-art Raptor engines is used to boost the Starship's second stage above the Kármán line in hypersonic speeds before simply returning to Earth for reuse, just like its Falcon 9 predecessor. The Starship itself discards no components in attaining orbit and is fully capable of returning to the ground and propulsively landing upright. On the other side, rapid reusability means that you don't need to spend months refurbishing the craft like you have to do with a space shuttle. It's more like a jet airliner than a spacecraft in the way it can be rapidly turned around. And this will have a huge impact on the economics of the system. Launch costs rapidly fall to just the money spent on the fuel and launch services required to operate the system as the bill costs are amortized over many hundreds of flights. Next, as we are talking about a spacecraft, we have to consider the interior rocket where the human will be. And well, this is really where Starship shines. You'll definitely have the most comfortable journey into space. After ascending to the top of the launch tower via elevator and walking across the access arm, you'll enter the highest level of Starship. This top level serves as both the crew deck and viewing gallery. The 20 seats that surround the room in circular fashion are reserved for the launch team and science officers. The seats are identical to the ones found in SpaceX Dragon 2 spacecraft. When, when they're not in use, the seats fold into the floor and the room transforms into a viewing gallery. Now look towards the walls. Those giant panels open to reveal a massive panoramic window. Everywhere you look, you can see the captivating void of space and the stars like diamonds on a blanket of ebony. On one side of the room, you'll see retractable seats that fold neatly into the wall, kind of like the ones in a high school gymnasium. However, these seats are way more luxurious and feature straps to keep you in place. After the fun that's been had, you must be all tuckered out and weary from so many new experiences in space. Wouldn't you like to have a comfortable, spacious area in order to lay your head? Well, look no further than the level below. This is the first class sleeping area. The cabins are stacked high in columns of four or five groups total, which means 20 passengers can fit comfortably on this level. Each cabin is 2.1 meters in length, 1.2 meters wide, and 0.8 meters in height. These cabins probably remind you of rooms in capsule hotels like in Tokyo, Japan, but they're much more expensive. A regular ticket on Starship might cost $200,000, so you'll be getting bang for your buck with these million-dollar cabins. Each room comes with its own tiny window so you can count the stars as you drift off to sleep. Now that you're well rested, it's time to refuel and enjoy some fine dining here in space. Here's the mess hall where you'll meet your daily caloric intake. Now you get to experience eating in zero gravity. The utensils and trays all connect to the tablet via magnets so they won't float away. The meals will consist of thermostabilized food, such as cans of tuna that has been heated and processed to destroy deleterious microorganisms and enzymes. You can also munch on intermediate moisture foods, otherwise known as shelf-stable foods, like dried fruit to prepare you for your new life on Mars. You'll also be fed insects, artificial eggs, and algae. Sounds delicious. So now you've processed your food, it's been digested. Oh, you're feeling quite queasy. You need to go to the little Martian's room and maybe even wash yourself down to relax further. Well, the next level has what you need and more. This level contains bathrooms, showers, and exercise equipment. The elliptical bikes are mounted to the wall rather than the floor to make pedaling easier in zero gravity. 
Treadmills are also designed with extra straps to keep you in place so you don't lose stability. The showers are tube-like with restraints on your ankles to help keep you in place. A pressurized, portable container of water connects to the ceiling and the water then flows through the connected hose and shower head. And don't forget your liquid soap. There's no drains, of course, so you have to suction up the suds using a collection bin as wayward water could pose a hazard to the expensive equipment on board. Starship has vacuum toilets that come with a urine collection tube and a septic tank. The next level is the passenger area. It's made up of three levels with 20 seats in a circular fashion. This is where your non-first class passengers will sleep and spend most of their time during the journey. It may look cramped, but the seats are quite comfortable. There's a partition between each seat for privacy, and the seats have three configurations, including launch mode, boarding mode, and sleeping mode. And on to the last level of the tour, here's the storage area, the lowest level on Starship. That huge door is actually a ramp that can lower a Mars rover vehicle out onto the surface of the red planet. The rover looks really similar to a Cybertruck. The cargo area on Starship can carry up to 100 tons of supplies. Last but not least, Starship will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever developed. Its booster stage should achieve around 70 meganewtons, enabling it to carry more than 100 tons to low Earth orbit. SpaceX doesn't say exactly how much. In total, it will stand 400 feet tall. Remember the main engines on Apollo's famous Saturn V rockets? They delivered some 35 meganewtons, about 8 million pounds of force, right off the pad. NASA has a monster rocket of its own, the Space Launch System, or SLS, the center of the Space Agency's Artemis Moon Program. Like Starship, SLS is yet to launch. When it does, it will produce 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, according to NASA's website, exerting more power than any rocket ever. This would be at odds with SpaceX's claim, depending on which rocket ends up launching first. Depending on how it's configured, SLS should be able to carry between 77 tons and 143 tons into low Earth orbit. After all, once Starship launched, it left all others in the dust. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.